Welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do an alteration in order to increase the waistline of a commercial pattern. It's going to be in three parts. We're first going to show you how to increase the waistline of a bodice piece, and then we're going to move on to doing bottoms. So the waistline adjustment in the bottom portion of a dress, pants, shorts, or skirt. Finally, I'm going to show you how to increase the waistline of the waistband. So once you know how to do all three, you should have no problems increasing the waistline for all your commercial pattern needs. So let's get started in showing you what items you're going to need in order to make these alterations. To do our alterations, we're going to need the following items. First, you're going to need some large sheets of paper. You're going to need your pattern that you're going to be doing your alterations with, some scissors, some straight pins, some tape, I have two different color markers here, a black and a red one, but you can use any colors that you want. A sewing gauge is helpful, and then of course you're gonna need your measurements for your waist. So we're gonna go over uh, the waist measurements and then read in the back of the pattern to figure out what size you're gonna cut out. So that's gonna be what's up next. So the first thing we're gonna do is consult the back of the pattern envelope because we need to know what size we're cutting out. So just like we do anytime we're trying to figure out our measurements, we try to fit up the best set of numbers we can. So you have your bust, your waist, and your hip are the three that I like to consult. And you're going to look and let's just say, oh, I'm a size 16, except for the waist, which is asking for a 30, and I'm a 32. I could go to the next size, but everything else is too big. So what I'm gonna do is just increase the waist on the size 16 instead of trying to make everything else smaller. So once you have that, you're going to remember this number. Whatever this waist measurement is on the back of the pattern envelope, we're going to compare it to our actual waist measurement and we're gonna go over the calculations in the next step. So once I have this number, for me, it's going to be 30. I'm gonna go ahead and take the measurement of my own waist and compare these two numbers. The waist measurement is gonna be the circumference of your torso, which is gonna be the smallest part where you have a natural indentation above your belly button. So right above there is your natural waistline. You're gonna go ahead and measure around the whole circumference of that area, and you're gonna write your measurement. So in my case, I'm gonna put 32 inches. Then you're going to write down the measurement that's listed on the back of the pattern for the waist for your size. So if I'm doing a size 16, it lists the waist measurement as a size 30. So I'll put pattern is a 30, and then I'm gonna take mine and I'm gonna subtract it for this, from this number. So 32 minus 30 inches is two inches. Now for the bodice and if I'm doing the bottom, you're gonna think there's two side seams for the front, two side seams for the back. So that is going to be four sides. So I'm gonna take this number, two inches, divide it by four, and that's gonna give me my magic number, which is half an inch. So this is gonna be our very important number. You're obviously gonna have a different number than me because I'm only increasing by two inches. So whatever your number is here, divide by four, you get this number, and this is how much we're gonna add to each of our side seams. So if I'm doing, for example, the bodice, I'm gonna add half an inch on this side of the front, half an inch on this side of the other side of the front, and then on the back, it's going to be the same because we need to alter the front pattern and the back pattern for the bodice, or if you're doing the bottom, it's the same thing. So now once we have this number, we can go ahead and go to our actual pattern piece and start working with it. The first example I'm gonna show you is how to do the waist alteration for a bodice pattern piece. So this is for the top portion of your dress or for a shirt. So I'm gonna show you on this bodice back piece, but you would do the same thing for the front. So you do the back and you do the front, but I'm just gonna show you the example once because it's exactly the same. So in order to prep for this, the first thing I would do is take your pattern piece and I would press it with either a cool or warm iron. You don't want it to be hot. You just wanna kind of flatten it out as best you can. So you can see I still have creases, but it's pretty flat for what I'm gonna be doing with it. The next thing you're gonna do is grab a piece of paper 
that's going to be large enough to fit at least half of my pattern piece. You'll notice that I don't have it for the whole pattern piece, which is fine because this is our side seam here and we're only going to be working in this area. After we finish, we're just going to tape our pattern piece to our worksheet area and that's going to increase it. So I'm still going to be utilizing most of my pattern piece. I'm just going to be adding a little bit right here while we're increasing the waist on our side seam here. So in order to know you're doing the right side, this is the armhole, here's the side seam, this is the center back or center front if you're working with the center front piece. So whatever side you have the armhole, that's the side that you're going to be working that you need to make sure that you have the paper under. After I've done that, you can see I'm using a piece of cardboard under this because I'm just sticking my straight pins through the tissue paper, through my paper, and through the cardboard so everything kind of sticks and I'm able to adjust my pattern piece by removing this and maybe keeping one straight pin in in order to pivot my pattern. So I like using the cardboard because it makes it really helpful in doing the pivot method. After I finish pinning everything down, I'm going to use one of my markers, in this case the black one, and I'm going to trace along the edge of my pattern piece. So along the bottom, the side, the armhole, and the top. So if I was to remove these pins, you can see there's the outline of my pattern piece, and I could easily just replace it and everything will line up. So once you have that done, we're then going to get our measurements so we can go ahead and start adjusting our pattern and doing the pivoting that we need in order to make our adjustments. The first thing I'm gonna mark on my pattern piece is where my seam allowance lines from my armhole, which is right here, and my side seam where they intersect right here. So to do that, you're gonna take whatever your seam allowance is for your given pattern, in my case it's 5 eighths of an inch, Going to mark that on my sewing gauge, and from the armhole line, I'm going to mark down 5 eighths of an inch, and from the side seam, I'm going to mark over 5 eighths of an inch. And right where those points meet, that's where my important mark is, which I already have right here. Next, you're going to take the calculation you did from before. This number now, you're going to use. So for me, it's half inch and you're going to use whatever your number is, and down here at the bottom portion of my bodice piece, I'm going to draw a line out a half inch. Okay. So now that I have that mark, I'm going to go ahead, take my straight pin, put it through my seam allowance mark up here, like that. Make sure I remove all the other straight pins in my pattern. And I'm going to take my pattern and I'm going to pivot over till this line of my pattern meets the mark that I made a half inch out or whatever your mark is. So once I have that, just straightening everything out, I'm then going to return my pins to my pattern so everything stays where it's supposed to take my other color marker and I'm just going to draw now on this new line that I created by pivoting my pattern because now this is increasing our waist exactly how much we need to increase it. So in my case, a half inch out. After you finish drawing your line here, you can go ahead pivot your pattern back to the original line. And at this point, you can go ahead and tape your paper to your pattern, probably on this line here. And what you would do is when you get to the side seam now, you're going to cut out on the new line. And I can go ahead and just draw a line meeting my original black line here. So that's all you need to do just to increase the waist, the two inches. And remember, it's two inches, which I divided in four, which means it's a half inch on each side. The nice thing about this is basically I'm keeping the integrity of the pattern. So if I have any darts 
or notches, they're pretty much staying in the same spot. So it's a little small alteration you're making just to increase this little area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it and cut it out and then show you the final pattern piece which has been altered. Here we have the completed alteration for the bodice back. You can see the little strip right here that's added on which extends our waist circumference on our pattern piece. So again, you would also need to do this for your bodice front, or if you did the front first, you'd have to do it for the back. So you need to do it for both pieces so that they match and everything works out evenly. So the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to do the alteration if you were doing the bottom half of the dress or pants or a skirt or shorts or something like that. So the bottom portion of your outfit. So now we're gonna look at the bottom portion. So this is skirt, pants, shorts, and if you did it for the top of your dress, then you're also gonna to wanna to do it for the bottom portion of your dress if it goes to the waist, because we need to make sure that it's going to match. So you're starting out the same way. You're gonna go ahead and do your black outline on the side that is going to be the side seam. So this side over here, this is the center back. You don't need to worry about this. We're just gonna be dealing with this area over here. And the other thing we need to worry about is where our waistline hip and where our hip line is going to be because those are gonna be our major pivot points when we create this. So after you lay out your pattern and you get it all straight, you're gonna go ahead and create your waistline up at the top. Now I was lucky that on my pattern piece, I have my waistline a line right here and they marked it out for me. But if you don't have yours, you can go ahead and create it just going down whatever your seam allowance is. So since mine is 5 eighths, I would go down 5 eighths and then I'm gonna draw a line across. Then for the hip line, if you have your hip line mark, you go ahead and you draw that line if it's on your pattern. If it's not, then we have to do a little investigation to figure it out. So if you look at the back of your pattern, sometimes where it has the body measurement is going to list where the hip measurement is gonna be. So in this particular case, as we can see, it's nine inches. So from my waistline, I'm gonna measure down nine inches and I'm gonna do a line because mine does not have a mark where the hip line is. If it doesn't give you any information whatsoever, the standard hip length distance is between seven and nine inches. And you can just measure from your waistline, so your natural waistline, down to the fullest part of your hips and then create a line. Also another um, clue is that the hip line is normally going to be at the widest point of the pattern. So you'll see it's narrow up here and then it widens. So that's also a good indication. But it's also a very good idea to look at your pattern piece and look at the back of your pattern envelope to figure out where it's going to be. So I have that, there's my hip line and my waistline. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark in my seam allowance, just like I did for the bodice. So I go in 5 eighths, I make a mark, and I go down 5 eighths, and then I put where that mark meets, and I put a little red mark there, because that's gonna be one pivot point. And then I do the same thing on my hip line. You just need to go over your seam allowance and make a mark. So now that we have those, we can start doing our pivot. Just like the bodice, you're going to make a mark for whatever your alteration measurement is going to be. So I went ahead and marked out the half inch. I'm gonna carefully remove my pins and I'm gonna have the top part of my pattern meet this line up here. And I'm gonna stick my straight pin into my pivot point here on the waistline. So everything is matching up. Then down here, where I have my hip line, I'm gonna pivot it till it meets with my original black line here and stick in a pin. And then I can go ahead and use my red marker to draw the outline of my new side seam here. After you finish with that, go ahead and slide it back to its original position on the black line. You go ahead, tape everything down, and now when you get to the red line, you're gonna cut along that, and that's what's gonna increase your waist right at that side seam. But that's all you need to do for a basic bottom just like this. I'm not gonna show you how to do a variation of a bottom, because what if you have a pocket, so therefore, this kind of angles out and then you have the separate pocket piece. So obviously this is gonna to need to be enlarged as well if you're increasing the waist. So the first thing you need to do to prep that, so you're gonna treat this as if it's your fabric pieces. You're gonna take your pocket and you're gonna place it underneath your pattern just like you would do if it was fabric. 
match up your notches and dots over here. Let's see, just make sure things are lining up. Like this angle's out, but you don't need to worry about that. And you're gonna pin your pieces together. Just pin them right here where they meet. And then after that, I can go ahead and get my paper and start doing the alteration. Just like you did before, you're gonna to wanna to have a piece of paper covering up your side seam here and a little bit of the top portion and draw your black outline. The only difference though, is I actually have two pieces of paper. I have one on top, which I'm gonna use for my pocket alteration, and then I have one a little bit longer, which is gonna be for the shorts alteration here. And the reason why is because I'm gonna do the alterations at the same time, so they're both gonna be exactly the same. And it's gonna be a lot easier for me. Now, I've already drawn my hip line and then I have my waistline. You can see I started right up here because I'm only dealing with this area right here. And you're gonna be doing the same exact thing where you're gonna be measuring out whatever your alteration measurement is. So I'm gonna grab my sewing gauge and my pen make a line and then I can go ahead slide this over here put it into my pivot point and then line this up till it hits the hip like that now instead of just drawing a red line which you can still do in this particular case I'm going to use my tracing wheel because I'm doing two papers at the same time I can go ahead and use this and it'll poke holes. That's why I like also having the cardboard. So then I'll see it through both versions of my paper. Now, if you go ahead and use uh, a pencil or a pen, just make sure you do it really dark. You can just turn the pages over. I like to pin them together so they all stay the same uh, place. And that way I can see through it and I can just draw on the wrong side. So that way I get both of them. So I'm just gonna draw my new line. And then I'll go ahead and draw over my line in a red marker so you'll be able to see where it is. Here you can see my red line here. And I went ahead and flipped it over and I was able to trace it on the back side. So that way I have all my lines for the shorts I'm doing and then also for the pocket. Now the main thing I wanna point out is you're definitely gonna notice more of a dramatic alteration to the pocket portion because we're doing the greatest up here. And then for me, on my personal pair of shorts here, the bottom of my pocket on the pants portion, not on the pocket, but on the pants, is really close to my hip. So that means this top part of my pattern is probably gonna hit like a right, about right here. So you're only gonna get for at least for me, like an eighth of an inch increase here at the top before it tapers into my hip line. So I just wanna point out that if you're not doing that much to this part, it could be because the bottom of your pocket gets so close to the hip line, so that's normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate each of these and then separate these again, and first we're gonna match up the pocket portion and then we'll talk about for this shorts part. I take my pocket piece and I put it to one of my pieces and you can see now I have the new alteration. So I go ahead, cut along the top of my pocket, go to the red line and cut there till it tapers back. So that would be the alteration for the pocket piece. Here you can see that same alteration on my other piece of paper and I'm gonna go ahead and place the shorts pattern piece back to the black lines and I'm matching up the side seam, the notch I have here, and then the top. But here obviously it doesn't reach because now the pocket portion is missing. So this is a huge void. And what that means is we're going to ignore it for this alteration for the shorts. So I would cut along the top and now I'm just gonna cut along this inside portion of the pocket and come out till I hit the red line. So like I said before, it's just a smidge. It's like an eighth of an inch. So I'd cut to the edge of the red and then taper down to the hip line. So you're not really gonna see much of an alteration, but it is gonna be a little one, which is important, so that it matches up with our pocket piece. And that's all you have to do for the shorts and for the pocket. And now we're gonna move on to looking at the waistband. 
Now we're going to be focusing on the waistband and the example I'm going to be showing you is for the classic basic one piece waistband. So if that's what you have, you're in luck because I'm going to show you exactly how to alter it for the larger waistline. So to do that, um, I don't have access to a commercial waistband pattern right now, so I'm just using a homemade one I have. So if you're using a commercial one, yours is obviously going to look different, but it's the same basic idea. So here's my waistband, and on one side of the waistband, you should have notches. Your notches are obviously not going to match up with mine, but there should be one side with notches and one long side without notches. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your scrap paper, which should be actually bigger than your actual waistband, and I lined up one side of my worksheet paper with the side of my waistband that does not have any notches because we're not going to be working with this side. We're going to be working with three sides, the short side, the side along the top that has the notches, and then the other side here. So I'm not showing you the whole waistband because it's really long, but we just wanted to be able to show at least most of it so you can get a general idea of what we're going to do. So for the first step, is we're going to mark out an outline of our waistband from the short side and then along the top till we get to the first side seam. Now that'll either be marked by, by a notch, either a single or a double notch, or you might have something that just looks like a line, or it might be a square, something like that, or you can just line it up on your pants and just see where it falls. So this is going to be my first side seam. And so I'm just going to go all along the outline and when I get to a notch, I can go ahead transfer that notch. But just the ones that come before the side seam. So I'm only going to this point. So I'm going to go all on here and here. Now we're going to be doing the slide method. So you're going to take your measurements again and you're going to take your difference and instead of dividing it by four, you're going to divide it by two, which I have down here. So two inches, whatever your measurement was here, take it, divide it by two, and this is going to be our new magic number. So one inch for me, whatever your number is, remember it because this is going to be important. So once you have that, and the reason why we're dividing it by two is because there's two cut edges of the waistband as opposed to four, which you would have in a bodice. So once you have that, you're going to remember it. And I'm going to go ahead, finish drawing my lines, the short side to my first side seam, drawing this notch right here. And then we're going to start sliding our waistband down because we want to make sure that all our notches get transferred over. Next, we're going to be sliding our pattern down towards the right, and the distance is whatever this number is. So for me, one inch. So I'm going to take this line here, my side seam, and I'm going to make a mark one inch away from that. Take out my pins, and then I'm going to shift until my side seam meets that mark. And then I'm going to repin it. Just so everything lies flat for me. All right, so you see here's the end of it and I went ahead and moved it over one inch. So we just, for me, I just need to do one more inch until I get it, and I'm actually going to shift this down. Okay. So here's where I'm gonna start drawing, and I'm going to transfer over my notches. And I'm going to continue drawing along here until I get to my other side seam. So here's my here's my other one. Mine's marked by a notch. But again, yours might be marked by a square or a dotted line. So now I'm just going to draw my line. And again, if I have any notches before this area, 
I'm going to go ahead and transfer them. So here I have my center notch. So once I reach this line, I'm going to again make a mark with my magic number, so one inch for me. Remove my pins. And when this side seam now meets this mark, that's the last time that we have to slide it over. Whoops. There we go. So I draw my notches and then I just continue on finishing the rest of the pattern. Any place I have a notch after that, I'm going to transfer over. So I'm going to draw my line here and then draw the line there. And then you have your new waistband pattern with your extension. So it has all your notches, which should match the alteration that you did for your pants. And here we have our completed alterations to our three portions. You can see here's the waistband we just completed up here. I have my skirt that I did, and you can see it's just the hip line up on the side seam. And then lastly, we have the bodice here, which is the side seam towards the bottom where we increased it. So that's all it takes in order to adjust your waistline for a commercial pattern. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over a hundred sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching!